So the Pessimist Archive has just documented, let's look at data of the past, at history. There's been a lot of fear-mongering about technology. Pessimist Archive does a really good job of documenting how crazily afraid we are of every piece of technology. We've been afraid, there's a blog post where Louis Anslow, who created Pessimist Archive, writes about the fact that we've been uh, fear-mongering about robots and automation for for over a hundred years. So why is AGI different than the kinds of technologies we've been afraid of in the past? So two things. One, we're switching from tools to agents. Tools don't have negative or positive impact. People using tools do. So guns don't kill, people with guns do. Agents can make their own decisions. They can be positive or negative. A pit bull can decide to harm you. That's an agent. The fears are the same. The only difference is now we have this technology. Then they were afraid of humanoid robots 100 years ago. They had none. Today, every major company in the world is investing billions to create them. Not every, but you understand what I'm saying? Yes. It's very different. Well, agents, uh, it depends on what you mean by the word agents. Uh, the, all those companies are not investing in a system that has the kind of agency that's implied by in the fears, where it can really make decisions on their own, that have no human in the loop. They are saying they're building super intelligence and have a super alignment team. You don't think they're trying to create a system smart enough to be an independent agent under that definition? I have not seen evidence of it. I, I think a lot of it is a marketing, uh, is, is a is a marketing kind of discussion about the future, and it's a it's a mission about the kind of systems we can create in the long term future. But in the short term, the kind of systems they're creating falls fully within the definition of narrow AI. These are tools that have increasing capabilities, but they just don't have a sense of agency or consciousness or self-awareness or ability to deceive at scales that would require, would be required to do like mass scale suffering and murder of humans. Those systems are well beyond narrow AI. If you had to list all the capabilities of GPT-4, you would spend a lot of time writing that list. But agency is not one of them. Not yet, but do you think any of those companies are holding back because they think it may be not safe or are they developing the most capable system they can given the resources and hoping they can control and monetize? Control and monetize, hoping they can control and monetize. So you're saying if they could press a button and create an agent that they no longer control, that they can have to ask nicely. <laughs> A thing that lives on a server across a huge number of com uh, computers. You're saying that they would uh, push for the creation of that kind of system. I mean, I can't speak for other people. For all of them, I think some of them are very ambitious. They fundraise in trillions. They talk about controlling the light corner of the universe. I would guess that they might. Well, that's a human question, whether humans are capable of that. Probably some humans are capable of that. My more direct question, if it's possible to create such a system, have a system that has that level of agency. I, I don't think that's an easy technical challenge. We're not, it doesn't feel like we're close to that. A, a system that has the kind of agency where it can make its own decisions and deceive everybody about them. The current architecture we have in machine learning and how we train the systems, how we deploy the systems and all that, it just doesn't seem to support that kind of agency. I really hope you are right. Uh, I think the scaling hypothesis is correct. We haven't seen diminishing returns. It used to be we asked how long before AGI, now we should ask how much until AGI. It's trillion dollars today, it's a billion dollars next year, it's a million dollars in a few years. Don't you think it's possible to basically run out of trillions? So is this constrained by compute? Compute gets cheaper every day, exponentially. But then that then, then becomes a question of decades versus years. If the only disagreement is that it will take decades, not years for everything I'm saying to materialize, then I can go with that. But if it takes decades, then uh, the development of tools for AI safety uh, becomes more and more realistic. So I guess the question is, 
I have a fundamental belief that humans, when faced with danger, can come up with ways to defend, defend against that danger. And one of the big problems facing AI safety currently for me is that there's not clear illustrations of what that danger looks like. There's no illustrations of AI systems doing a lot of damage. And so it's unclear what you're defending against because currently it's a philosophical notion that yes, it's possible to imagine AI systems that take control of everything and then destroy all humans. It's also a more formal mathematical notion that you talk about that it's impossible to have a perfectly secure s system. You can't, you can't prove that a program of sufficient complexity is uh, completely safe and, and perfect and know everything about it. Yes, but like when you actually just pragmatically look, how much damage have the AI systems done and what kind of damage, there's not been illustrations of that. Even in the autonomous weapon systems, there's not been mass deployments of autonomous weapon systems, luckily. Um, the automation in war currently is very limited. The, that the automation is at the scale of individuals versus like at the scale of strategy and planning. So I think one of the challenges here is like, where is the dangers? Uh, and the intuition that Jan Lacuna and others have is let's keep in the open building AI systems until the dangers start rearing their heads. And they become more explicit. There, there start being uh, case studies, illustrative uh, case studies that show exactly how the damage by AI systems is done. Then regulation can step in. Then brilliant engineers can step up and we can have Manhattan style projects to defend against such systems. That's kind of the, no the notion. And I guess at tension with that is the idea that for you, we need to be thinking about that now so that we're, we're ready because we will have not much time when such systems are deployed. Is that true? So there is a lot to unpack here. Uh, there is a partnership on AI, a conglomerate of many large corporations. They have a database of AI accidents they collect. I contributed a lot to that database. If we so far made almost no progress in actually solving this problem, not patching it, not, again, lipstick on a pig kind of solutions, why would we think we'll do better than we're closer to the problem? Uh, all the things you mentioned are serious concerns. Measuring the amount of harm, so benefit versus risk there is, is difficult. But to you, the sense is already the risk has superseded the benefit? Again, I, I want to be perfectly clear. I love AI. Yes. I love technology. I'm a computer scientist. I have a PhD in engineering. I work at an engineering school. There is a huge difference between we need to develop narrow AI systems, super intelligent in solving specific human problems like protein folding, and let's create super intelligent machine guard it and will decide what to do with us. Yeah. Those are not the same. I am against the super intelligence in general sense with no undo button. So do you think the teams that are doing, that are able to do the AI safety on the, the kind of narrow AI risks that you've mentioned, are those approaches going to be at all productive towards leading to approaches of doing AI safety on AGI? Or is it just a fundamentally different Partially, problem? but they don't scale. For narrow AI, for deterministic systems, you can test them, you have edge cases, you know what the answer should look like, you know the right answers. For general systems, you have infinite test surface, you have no edge cases. You cannot even know what to test for. Again, the unknown unknowns are under underappreciated by people looking at this problem. You are always asking me, how will it kill everyone? How will it will fail? The whole point is, if I knew it, I would be super intelligent. And despite what you might think, I'm not. So to, to you, the concern is that we would not be able to see early signs of an uncontrollable system. It is a master at deception. Sam tweeted about how great it is at persuasion. And we see it ourselves, especially now with voices, with maybe kind of flirty, sarcastic female voices. It's going to be very good at getting people to do things. 